TYT would like to thank Squarespace for making possible our coverage of the 2017 Oslo Freedom Forum. Whether you need a website, a domain, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. You can start your free trial at squarespace.com slash TYT, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. A Russian film and theater director uh, has been taken into custody, and his uh, theater has been raided, his home has been raided, uh, 15 or 16 other locations have been raided. Um, now, this is Kirill Serebrenikov. He's both a Cannes Award winner. I'm not fam familiar that much with uh, the, did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know much <laughs> about these awards. Um, but he won the award, and at the same time, he's also a Last frequent year. Qu qu yeah. uh, critic, uh, yes, of both uh, the Russian government and the Russian Orthodox uh, Church, which theoretically might play into this. So apparently, around 50 actors and members of theater staff were held during the raid. Their mobile telephones were confiscated, and investigators say that the entire thing is linked to a probe and a suspected fraud back between 2011 and 2014 of uh, state's arts funding. And so I've seen numbers uh, saying that they believe that he or people he's uh, connected to have embezzled between $20,000 of state's arts funding or possibly millions of dollars of state's arts funding. And that is supposedly why all of these people were taken into custody. It's not clear at this point if Sarah Brennikov um, uh, is a personal, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure, uh, is uh, considered a suspect or simply a witness. Some people are now saying simply a witness. Yeah, so he's being questioned as a witness, I believe, and it's the woman who was the former director of the, Go so his current position is director of the Gogol Theater, which is yes. this famous theater in Moscow. Um, <laughs> So, and, and it was the, f the former director at the time who they received a certain amount of money from um, the Russian culture ministry. It was a, yeah. it was a government grant. Um, it was supposed to be to produce basically patriotic content. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, so So a little bit about this director. He's, he's like kind of, he's well respected at the moment for reviving the Google Theater. It was becoming mm -hmm. this like f fusty old establishment, boring, not cutting edge place. And he's apparently revived it with quite like edgy, subversive, mm -hmm. interesting, difficult shows. Um, and what he- That and poke fun or criticize yeah. very powerful organizations in the society. Yeah, and they basically, and I, I, didn't, I didn't pull the exact quote, but um, the investigative body, which is a semi newish body, but it's a little bit like the Department of Justice. They're the ones like investigate, they, they act on tips and then investigate um, to, to put everything together to bring them to court. Um, apparently they had received complaints that pornographic and vulgar yeah, things it was. Uh, let's see. It's foul language, yes. propaganda of immoral behavior, and pornography. Right. Um, so this is an old does trick. That stuff Porn in I don't and go to a lot taxes. Of theaters. Porn and taxes exactly, of yes. like trying to ensnare somebody. Yes. Sometimes it's true. Sometimes it is an old trick. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, and so this is all. So there's actually uh, one of the speakers here this year, uh, Vladimir Kura Mura. He is a outspoken Russian activist and critic. He mentioned at his speech this year that um, there's, and also this has been in the news that. Um, uh, Alexei Navalny, who's like one of the main opposition figures in Russia, um, there's a wave of protests uh, scheduled for June 12th. Mm -hmm. and, and there have been some waves that have happened in the past yeah, few months. Too. In protest to crackdowns like this. Oh, yeah. Um, well, and this was mentioned by Boris Nemtsov's uh, daughter, one of the speakers, right. Zana, Zana Nemtsov. Uh, she specifically mentioned this at the close of her address today, um, that this is the sort of thing where the, the potential suppression and the crackdowns go beyond strictly political figures and into things like the arts. And that's something that we've seen in other, in other countries. This is another artist that I'm not personally familiar with, but uh, Ukrainian film director Oleg Sensov was convicted for terrorism charges uh, back in 2015 and is in a Russian prison till today. Both the US State Department and the EU and the UN have called for him to be released, saying that the charges were completely made up. Um, and he had been critical of, uh, of the regime, and uh, specifically during uh, the taking of Crimea had uh, aided people who were injured in that. And mm. so in the case of Serebrenikov, uh, he personally, back in 2014, had described the annexation of Crimea as uh, the actions of a, quote, impoverished thug who has lost his mind from despair, which is the words of an artist, <laughs> admittedly. Yeah. And so he's not being dramatic not or anything. And forgotten at this point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, thankfully, uh, Dmitry Peskov, uh, spokesman for the Kremlin, says there is no politics nor anything to do with creativity here. So I'm reassured. But Great. anyway, look, it could, it could be that this is a, a single solitary thing and that it's simply a dark and suspicious act that has no, no follow-up to it. It's not the part of a larger crackdown on the arts in Russia. That's possible, I suppose. But I know that activists like the ones that we've mentioned are incredibly worried about this, about 
that the continual backsliding on human rights and freedoms of various forms, whether it's of uh, journalists or artists or uh, political opposition figures, will continue to move in the wrong direction. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, it's a surefire way to fire up even, and maybe that's what they're doing. They're gaslighting the young progression kids that are basically going to be out on those streets on June 12th, no matter, no matter what. This yeah. will add, add kind of fuel to their fury. Um, and let's say there is another just high profile kind of denunciation of, of this by Mikhail Baryshnikov, and he described the raids as repression, saying an artist of whom Russia should be proud is being debased and humiliated. And I'm only mentioning that because Mikhail Baryshnikov is a, an accomplished, am amazing ballet dancer, but he will forever be known as the Russian guy from Sex and the City. And I'm sure <laughs> he regrets that. City. <laughs> Listen, I, I, it's like forced upon you of women my age. Like I, I had to watch that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, what I would say, I, I spoke to a journalist, who, a Russian journalist, um, about the June 12th protest. I was like, what do you think is going to happen? And she was like, it's not going to be good. Yeah. It's there. There's probably going to be. There were protests in March um, of this year, and over a thousand people got arrested. And Alex Alexei Navalny was in jail for like almost two weeks or over two weeks. Um, and I'm just interested to see what the June 12th protests will bring.